couple of team members I haven't seen for a long time. <laughs> you're, you're in the office now. Yeah, good we have morning, a... everybody, and uh, hi, everybody, depending on where you are. Good morning, good evening. Welcome to the webinar. A powerful combination in context technology and smartphone eye tracking. I'm Quirks Editor Joe Ridholm, and before we get started, let's quickly go over the ways you can participate in today's discussion. You can use the chat tab to interact with other attendees, and if you'd like to ask questions of the presenters, you can use the Q&A tab to submit questions during the session, and our speakers will answer them after the presentation. Our presenters today are Jeff Bander, Chief Revenue Officer at iSquare, and Philip Reiter, COO and Partner at iSquare. Jeff, take it away. Thank you, Joe. And I want to thank everybody for attending our presentation today. And we're going to talk, as uh, Joe said, the powerful combination of using our System Zero in-context technology, which is testing in the natural environment with accurate smartphone eye, eye tracking. Uh, it's, as we know, technology is moving quick, and it's really important that we keep, keep up with the changes and the advancements that are going on. And we're going to talk about, you can go next. We're going to focus on what we call the human experience at iSquare, it's see the experience. It's really creating the most natural experience for consumers and to help companies get more predictive and accurate, actionable insights. Um, Philip and I are going to go through, you can go next. Uh, we're going to go through a, a brief intro. Uh, we're going to have a discussion about the whole marketplace and eye tracking in the smartphone environment. System zero, we're going to do perception theory and practice. And then we're we'll, uh, go some example case studies and examples of the combination. So uh, what are the takeaways? Uh, what we're seeing, and everyone is seeing this, the majority of media consumption right now is moving more and more to mobile. Uh, a few years ago, it might have been 50-50. Now we're seeing a big increase in what's going on mobile whether it's social media, video, e-commerce, uh, the media is being consumed on smartphones, which are becoming amazing computers uh, more than they were. Uh, we had computers 10 years ago, they're more advanced. So these technologies used to be in a lab, then they were on desktops and now on mobile. So we're gonna discuss, you know, when does eye tracking support my research, especially as we're moving more towards mobile, what should be considered when integrating eye tracking, uh, you know, what are the goals, what are the objectives, what are, uh, on what consumers see, and then how can in context and eye tracking be successfully integrated into projects? So how does eye tracking create added value? Um, it's really, as we know, eye tracking has been around a very long time, as we mentioned, starting in the lab, and then basically around 2011, it became available on desktops. And uh, the big challenge since then, the last 10 plus years is, how do we get it on the smartphone? And we know that it helps record what's being seen, what's not being seen, what order, and how long. And when we can do this in a natural environment, the insights that we get are more meaningful rather than a environment that's not natural. Uh, and it just helps uh, in ad research, to see your ad, what's being seen, not seen, and A-B testing. Uh, shopper research, really important as uh, this is uh, Amazon's uh, big week. I think they uh, did over, they're supposed to do over $10 billion in the next few days. Um, there probably isn't anyone who's on this uh, webinar that hasn't bought something from Amazon, maybe one or two. Um, but we're seeing shopper research Everyone's trying to learn how do we win in this marketplace um, and being making sure that your messages and your products and your ads are being seen in e-commerce is really, really important. And in UX, uh, it's probably where it really first started and user experience, really understanding what people see as far as um, call to action buttons, buy buttons, next, uh, really, really important in all three of these areas. So we're going to talk about seeing the experience. And when we talk about see the experience, seeing what your customers see, see what they think, feel, and do, and really what makes the difference. And again, the key is the natural experience. This really can't stress enough. Uh, when they're in the real world, your actual insights is really how you're going to win in the marketplace. 
So uh, briefly, just about our company, iSquare, founded in 1999 in Berlin, Germany. Uh, we work in, we have offices in six countries now, in um, London, New York, Hong Kong, um, Tokyo, and India. Uh, India was open last year. Uh, we have over 82 people. Uh, we work globally over 60 countries. Uh, we are a big innovator with technology and psychology. And I think one thing about what I talked about system zero, which our CEO actually invented that term uh, as a foundation for system one and system two, uh, eight of the top 10 Brit uh, innovative companies use this system zero technology, use our technology. And we work with a lot of companies. You'll see a lot of these are outside the US headquartered because the company has been around since 1999 uh, overseas. Uh, the US market uh, opened up in 2017 at the end of the year. And it's uh, been really, really exciting to share this technology and the company's expertise with the American uh, market research companies. So we're gonna take a, a little break here and um, Philip and I are gonna have a little discussion and uh, we really also encourage everyone to ask questions, put the, the questions um, in the chat, and we're going to do everything we can to make sure there's time. And if not, we'll get back to everybody. So, uh, Philip? Um, yeah. Thanks. My pleasure to be here with you, Jeff, even though, like, we already read in the chat, I'm a little further further away, but it's, it's always great, great to be on a webinar with you. And Berlin and New York is always a good Good combination, anyways. And we thought we will do a little bit of a stop here to not show too many PowerPoint slides, and also to do a discussion that kind of taps in more on all of your experience, of course, and um, to discuss and also maybe to, like you said, find some good questions also for later on from that we can collect in the Q and A. And yeah, I mean, the, the in context idea, Jeff. I mean, it's it's something that you you are really strongly connected to, right? And I know you have been in the field of market research for, for a very long time, and iSquare has, has been doing eye tracking since 20 years almost, and in context, but what's, what is it that connects you with it? Like, I would, I would also almost say emotionally. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you know, I'm glad that, because uh, it, it, I feel emotionally about it, because I think this is a game changer in the industry. Um, our CEO, we call it system zero in context, um, natural in context, live in context. I really love it because, and obviously the marketplace does too with so many other companies using our technology. To, to kind of keep it short and sweet, you know, in the past market researchers uh, would show static images, um, show an image, maybe a video of an ad or a package and just ask questions. Um, been doing that for over a hundred years. And it's important to ask questions, there's no question. Um, but the reality is, is not everyone is able to articulate um, how they feel, um, what they just experienced, because if you have in the subconscious mind, a lot of things that we do is just done without a lot of um, uh, thinking about it, it's just natural. So when you're doing, when you're showing something in a natural environment where someone's given a task where they're not even aware it's being tested. And I think that's really important when they're, we're doing uh, in context, our, our live in context and social media, they're gonna browse social media mm -hmm. and they don't know what's being tested. Is it content? Is it uh, Facebook, YouTube? They don't, they don't have any idea. So you're getting the real life um, experience behavioral metrics um, without them knowing. Like when I say not knowing, they don't know what's being tested. Same with the e-commerce task. They're told to buy something, uh, buy uh, some sneakers. Well, when they go to the search results page, they don't know that we injected the test package on that page. They, 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 there's 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 different items, and they not they don't know which one is. You're just told to make a purchase. So we're getting all the behavioral metrics in a natural environment, and the, the, the results that you get are just more meaningful um, because people cannot, if you had someone shop and say, why did you do this? Or why didn't you do this? We know what they did and we don't have to ask them what they did because right, right. instead of doing just a question, we're measuring the behavior. Mm -hmm. no, good, it good takes point. all the biases out. Uh, so mm -hmm. I, do, I do get excited about it because I think it's a real foundation for 
all all research. Yeah, it should it should be. I don't. I mean, research, of course, is a is a broad scope, and for our type of research, let's call it like applied research, it's it's crucial. I would even I would even say yeah. Yeah, and it, Philip, you just finished a presentation at uh, uh, Etro. On, um, you, you're our company's eye tracking expert, and uh, we lean on you for a lot of information. So, kind of tell a little bit about um, eye tracking, why it needs in context. Yeah, thanks. I mean, eye tracking expert, of course. There's there's many many of of us here at iSquare, and it's a it's a crucial method for us, but. Um, I think it's the first time though, that we have been invited to speak at Etro. It's a very scientific community, so normally there we don't participate as often. So it's eye tracking research and application. I think it, it's an ACM connected um, event, which is like automation and computation machinery, like something very scientific. And um, so for us, it was a great honor to speak there. And of course, all of the eye tracking vendors are sponsors there. So. We are also sponsors, and it's, it's really good for us to be connected to, to science. And and there you could really see the the difference, like the research that the researchers at the universities do is is very very strict and standardized, and like lab settings, you know, you see just X and Ys and dots moving around, and it's very very far away from natural settings, and. So they're really interested in this applied research, like we do it, how do we solve this question, right? How can we even do research in these almost natural environments? Because it's so difficult to, to analyze all of this, right? Because eye tracking, that's the most challenging thing. Everybody can do something different, has so many degrees of freedom, like walking around in a shop or moving around on a, on a web page. then the analysis will be complicated. And so that was really interesting to speak there and um, also to see all of the advances in the field, right? What does Toby come up with? What does Pupil Labs come up with? And all of these partners of us who are vendors to us, like Oculate, the smartphone eye tracking, we'll talk about that. And also Toby announced their great um, new um, smartphone eye tracking which is also going to be a new innovation like disrupting the market and we're also all looking looking forward to that and we'll also of course have a look into it since we don't like build eye trackers right what we do is is make the best possible research and we implement different eye tracking systems in our research process and the the one that is best suited for let's say a UX study or a large scale ad study that we'll take and also we'll we'll also definitely look in, into that. Did you want to go over maybe some of the the just some of the data that at Etra, maybe some of the eye tracking information or yeah it's I mean you can actually at the at the webpage I'll I'll post it in the in the channel okay. um, of Etra. You can I think also look look at the keynotes. The other keynotes like of Dr. Koenig he's like a, a German professor they're highly sophisticated. It's, it's a lot about neural networks and AI, like what is actually possible, like looking at, at, at human faces and eyes, like what can automatically already be processed, maybe even without a calibration needed, all of these scientific questions. And yeah, I'll, I'll make sure to post it here, but I think it won't take, take too long. Sure. Okay. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I mean, one of the questions that also comes up in this scientific um, way, like, does in context, like in, in your perception, Jeff, does it need eye tracking? I mean, you, you do make so many in context studies with so many clients. Do you have the feeling they always need eye tracking or or how, do, how would you see it as an add-on or? Yeah, it's good. good. Well, a lot depends on the goal of the study. Um, you know, what is the objective if we're testing maybe different buying buttons um, on e-commerce or uh, call to actions and you want to see what's how long it takes someone to see something did they see it did they not see it that might come into play um, I, I think we really have to look at each case based on what the goal is but there's no question that it can add something to the whole package of in context uh, where you do system one system two in the system zero environment and then we add that uh, it, it can uh, help get certain if, if we know what the goal is 
and it makes sense, we'll we'll discuss it, the possibility of doing it. Mm -hmm. And obviously, if we can do it on a phone, uh, that opens up a lot of opportunities since so much of everything's being done on the phone now. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, shall we shall we go on? Let's, with the let's go back. Yeah, let's get back into then? that. Okay, so let me reshare here and. Um, I think you're going to take over on perception implicit. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, some of these some of these slides I have also presented at, at the ETRA. And I don't. I don't. Okay, good. I see it now. You see so, it now. Okay, yeah. I, I'm. It's, it's a little time lag in between. Yeah. And and when we talk about perception and attention, you know, scientifically these are two very different concepts, and and you could already talk about hours about these. So so we we say perception. And when we talk about it, we basically mean our visual perception. And, and we all know how important the visual intake is in our society. We're a very visually dominated society. And in our model, like you already mentioned it before, Jeff, we differentiate three systems, like the implicit and explicit system one or two. And we kind of take out the perception. Kahneman already suggested that. And we do that because, not because just eye tracking is, is such a, um, important method for us, but um, so many of these very, very early processes are so yeah subconscious, and we, we do have to measure them. We cannot talk about it with, with people in research. Of course, we can, we can try, and a lot of times we would fail, like science shows us. So we do differentiate methods for these three systems. The implicit is a little bit more about reactions. So when we call, when we talk about system one, we do a lot look at people's reactions, also emotional reactions and and how they zap or maybe scroll. And of course, the effect, when we talk about effect in advertisement, for example, or on user experience, um, something like trust, um, all these concepts, they are measured last, let's say with a questionnaire, also with the interview. And these very early things we talk about in System Zero, we do want to have a look at today. and. I'll do um, a very short part about perception. And like James and all these very, very early researchers, Helmholtz already realized it's a very psychological concept, perception. It's not rational. It's something that is being constructed in our mind and it's totally optimized. So everything that happens in our brain concerned to perception and visual intake is like, is like very much um, out of our control. And you know all of these games, and I'll, I'm going to skip um, the visual games. I'm just going to um, show one or two of our um, publications to this. So this is a publication in, in the textbook um, of eye movement, eye movement research that I did with my colleague um, Matthias. And here we also gave an overview about the neuromarketing tool set and the things that influence our visual perception and Wedel and Peters is basically the they it's their article that we are citing here. They say it's so important to understand what is influencing our visual attention. And it's the bottom up part, which is the stimulus driven part, right? Some all the stuff that comes from evolution and basically pop out effects, salience filters, shape, size, color, gestalt, psychology, or simply evolutionary speaking, something tiny moving on your desk, and you will definitely look there, or something moving on the ceiling. Um, that's just something we'll have to turn our attention to, just to survive, I guess. And then we have the top-down factors, working memory decision, also competitive selection, when our our goals come in, like actually actually searching for something or you're in a shop and you have a shopping list. And um, so that's definitely very important. And Beatles and Peters pointed out that the exposure situation, the level of control and the directed or natural attention is very important to, to watch out for. And if it's not a natural setting, then we, we do have a problem of what the eye tracking results are worth, right? Are they valid internally? externally, and I like the English word, the ecological validity, like that's that's basically what it's about. And when we look at eye tracking, like on a map, let's say, of all research methods, now this is a UX focused map, so we have attitudes, we have behavior, and you could 
put eye tracking somewhere on this map. We have quant, we have qual, then we probably all agree, yeah, it's, we don't measure like any attitudes, we do measure behavior. So it's probably eye tracking is somewhere, somewhere up here, right? It's not what people say, it's more what people do. It's not really qual or quant. You could, you could, I guess, argue about it. And in this um, chart for UX, they put eye tracking over here more on the qual side. And that's something we could also um, discuss, right? For us, eye tracking can be used in qualitative, direct interview settings. People can actually speak while they do eye tracking, even though that's something we do not necessarily recommend. But we can do something like an RTA, actually look at an eye tracking recording after a test session and just do it with five people. And it's great for finding, you know, problems on a UX prototype. We do not need large samples, but then of course we need high accurate eye tracking. If we talk about like the more quantitative side, like you just mentioned, package test, shelf test, our clients want to see big numbers like 50 people or 100 people. And then eye tracking gets challenging. And that's where you have to have it very good under control your context. And that's something that we do. We prepare the context. We know exactly what's happening and what's not allowed as well. And I guess that's then the keyword for you, Jeff, to, to explain like what is possible in our in context. And it feels natural, but it's not, gives not, like there's some boundaries, right? Yes, yeah. Thank you. And um, I mentioned briefly uh, about System Zero and for anyone who has not yet done testing in System Zero, I highly recommend uh, if you want to see demos of it and want to uh, see the, the value of it, uh, let us know. We'll send information on it because it really, uh, from what we hear from our clients and what we see, uh, it's a game changer as far as really getting accurate and predictive results. Um, we're seeing this across the board, whether it's with social media, whether it's with e-commerce, um, even um, in UX, the, the natural environment really changes everything as far as what kind of results you're getting. They're just more predictive, more reliable. Um, probably a lot of people on here are already aware of it. Um, we do work in three different areas, user experience, brand media experience, and shopper experience. We are seeing a huge increase in e-com shopper experience, whether it's pack testing, whether it's Amazon ad, ad testing, and all of these could be used with the mobile with eye tracking. Um, for those uh, of you we've seen in the last year, Amazon right now has 10% of the digital ad, not, not e-commerce, the digital ad market, and that will continue to grow, um, mainly because they're the end point of buying and they happen to be really smart in how they grow their uh, ad business. Something to really look into um, and look at to using all system zero, system one, and system two approaches. You can go on. And when we talk about the combination, I think uh, what would be, um, if we have time at the end, Philip's going to show the process, but if we don't, if you send us your email, we will send you a, not only a video of the process, and the nice part about this whole process, it's your phone, you're at home, there's no other equipment needed, you don't have to put glasses on, um, you don't have to go to a lab, you're not using your uh, uh, webcam on your computer, um, you can send uh, your email and we'll send you one, a recording of the process, but also uh, we'll send you a link and you can do it yourself and we'll send you back the results of what your eye tracking was on your phone. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is a great, 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 great way to validate and see uh, the accuracy. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's a big part. The biggest challenge has been on uh, the phones is accuracy. And yeah, I'll, I'll have the dashboard open. If we have enough time, I'll be happy to, to open a couple of recordings that are just coming in now from a US study that is, is live right now and Great. I'd be happy to do that. And then this kind of gives you, you know, what, what it looks like. Um, the users browse, this is social media as they normally would. They're not told to look at anything, just browse. So we're gonna measure all the behavior. That's the behavioral metrics. We measure almost 30 behavioral metrics. Any potential behavior they do is measured. So you're getting the attention, you're getting the interest, the interaction. 
when they come in contact with the image, um, they don't know which, you know, what's on the screen that's being measured. So it's very natural. And then when you add the eye tracking to it, we're going to be able to know, did they see what you wanted them to see? How long did they see it? And in what order did they see it? Uh, five seconds later, 20 seconds, one second. So that's really the beauty of the in context combined with the eye tracking. Um, instead of showing a, an image, these are just live people browsing. And we do this on all the um, social media sites. And anytime, uh, you know, like TikTok in the last year has just skyrocketed. Uh, so we added TikTok to our, now you're looking here at e-commerce. And this was a very nice uh, A-B test to see which package, one, how did they find it? How long did it take them to find it? And uh, basically, this is a great, great way to see their behavior. We also add the survey to it. So you're getting system one, system two in the system zero environment and adding eye tracking to it. So it's really a, a complete package. Now, um, in um, Amazon, we talk a lot about this is a good example where their uh, responders told to type in headphones. And again, they don't know which of the uh, packages we inserted that's being tested. So we're going to be able to measure, again, all the behavior. And then also adding the eye tracking, be able to see, did they even see your package? And when they saw it, did they look at the, the pricing? Did they look at the uh, descriptors? Did they look at reviews? What did they look at? Mm -hmm. and, and you can also see here the, the URL, right? So it's basically on our system. And it also has these privacy um, advantages, especially the whole GDPR thing over here in, in Europe. We don't want to see your private accounts and your right. private um let's say social media so that's also a great advantage for us it, it, good point felt that you know being a berlin-based company that i think uh america was a little behind in a lot of the privacy so we're really ahead of pretty much everyone in the world when it comes to the, the privacy issues and we're not going to go through all of these but if you can maybe go mm -hmm. uh this I'm this sorry. is a great no. you know, what well, yeah right here e-commerce results so now we're going to be able to see what they looked at, how long, besides their behavior, and what they say. So, you know, measuring above the fold. Visualizations are crucial. What they see and didn't see, they can't respond on something if they didn't see it, and how long they saw it is also important. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And then when it comes to ad research, really the same thing, to optimize content, um, really understand the viewing time, and which, which, creative is engaging more with the consumer, which is really important when you're trying to get action and attention. Or when you have new ad formats compared to old ones, these kind of questions. Right. And then uh, again, we do this on Instagram. Um, I don't think for time reasons we can go through all these, okay. uh, but maybe mm -hmm. we should you know, Instagram, Twitter. I think we only have about five. That and there's always more and more being yeah. added, of course. It's YouTube, Facebook, um, Spotify. Keep going. And TikTok. TikTok, Sorry, TikTok these is growing, audio. growing a lot. <laughs> and this is, this is just a second here on the flow. Uh, people get their survey. The uh, respondents, they'll qualify. They'll have pre-questions to make sure they're the right participants. Then they'll go through the calibration on the phone, then they'll go through the behavior task on shopping, if it's e-commerce or browse, if it's social media, and we're going to be measuring behavior, we're going to measure what they're looking at, and then we'll follow up with a questionnaire at the end. So you're really getting a very holistic uh, insights into all the behaviors, subconscious, conscious. If you go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, you can click, yeah. So this is just showing, we won't go through the whole thing, but as people are reading on the left, the instructions, you can see how they're reading it. You click, and then they're going to get the recording, in the middle one, and then the validation test. Yeah, the validation test is something we'd like to add because you can see so nicely, especially at the end when the phone maybe has been moved a lot. 
if the accuracy is still like it was in the beginning. Now this is something like in the beginning, it's always very, very good. And um, with the taps, we can actually see, okay, now the person clicked here, like with a finger tapped on the screen. And then we know this is also where they look. So it's a very good validation task force. And you here, you get a, get a feeling like if it, if it works very well, um, the eye tracking is, is very much as accurate as, as the size of these dots. And um, that's definitely much better than we imagined like a couple of years ago. That's right. That's been the biggest challenge with mobile is the accuracy, and uh, which is taking the time to get it out to the market. Philip, you want to do a summary? Yeah, I mean, the summary is obvious, of course, that we, we talked about the, the fast and easy study implementation. Like we've done a lot of eye tracking studies globally and running eye tracking studies in the US for us is always a big challenge, right? We have to go east and west coast, go to the labs, um, prepare them with equipment and doing like a one or 300 respondent eye tracking study in the US, you can imagine it's not possible, like under 10,000 euros, it's just too much, um, too much equipment we would have to, to also make available and um, get the people in the lab it takes time. And now we can, we can actually do it within a couple of days. And of course we're working on getting the, the right panels on board and it's still, it's still um, not as easy as maybe with webcam eye tracking, but the, the smartphone does, does help us a lot here and the valid data and privacy friendly approach. We, we touched upon on already. So validity in the scientific way for us is a crucial point. It has to be natural. So we don't want to do these studies with forced exposure. Look at this picture for 10 seconds. It's just not the data we're interested in. And yeah, we, we talked about that. And then the combination of actually having a great setting for media test. It could be also like a, something like a newspaper or a TV simulation or the real um, um, social media in context solution. Combining these with eye tracking is for us the challenge. So we take the data here from our partner. We, we showed the, the Oculate eye tracking here today, um, import the data. So we match it with our data where we have all of the behavioral data and then um, add the questionnaire data and have a very holistic picture. Just doing eye tracking doesn't do the trick either for us. So it's the combination. Yeah. And just briefly, you know, the company was founded in 1999 with eye tracking, hence the name iSquare and implicit right. research. So um, we have a, a 21 year history of eye tracking and it's important to us. And it's been important for a while for us to be able to get it in the mobile for the mobile phone and you know, we are uh, excited that it's only going to continue to get be better and have more applications. And we just want to, we think it's important for the market research uh, world to be aware that uh, it's, uh, here we are, it's at the beginning. So there's a lot of potential here, but um, we're going to start seeing more and more as everything's being done on the phone or almost everything. Definitely. And I don't know if we if we have enough time. Should I should I show the dashboard for for a second? What yes. is what, what is, what is our time right now? I don't see a clock on this uh, screen. It's like half an hour. We've got hour. about we've got about twelve minutes left, I think. Okay. okay. Maybe, yeah. uh, and also, we are very happy if you post questions right in the Q and A. Rob, Roberto, and Emily have already asked something, and maybe we can collect the questions there and I'll just share my screen again and so, so if there are questions maybe you want, should we do the question first and then do that after because yeah, yeah we can do that that's, that's a good idea and then Roberto so he was he was first and he asked how do you correlate attention to action or emotion or attention to ask and and that's a for eye tracking research it's our biggest challenge. Normally, you know, the easiest thing is to analyze eye tracking, you get a heat map, and then later on, you try to find a good story with your with your other data, right, with the explicit data, but actually bringing it all into one data set, into one data set like in an SPSS or Exify, that's, that's always the biggest challenge. And for that, you really 
have to define before you start the study, what's your hypothesis? What do you want to find out? And which eye tracking metric will I take and actually compare later on? And then it works. Then we can say, okay, like Jeff said, you only want the attention on the button X or on the visual Y and see who was who saw it for how long and how often. And we put it into the data set. And then we can correlate it with all of the other metrics, like what do people remember, what do they consider. And then we can, if we have large samples, we can even go beyond and do a model and say, how much does eye tracking explain maybe of the NPS or of my buying intention? That only works, of course, if I have hundreds or 200 people. Otherwise, we can't do these higher statistics. And I think, yeah, like actually correlating attention, we do need large samples. That's important. And a good data set with, with clear hypothesis beforehand. We cannot record eye tracking and later on kind of cherry pick what we want to do. And that's also what in our approach we wouldn't recommend to do. OK, I'll, I'll ask the, the next, I'll answer, answer the next one. Any tips for, from someone who wants to use smartphone eye tracking but needs to get buy-in from reluctant team or upper management? Um, <laughs> that's a great question. question. Um, first thing I would try to find out is what is the reluctance? Do they not like eye tracking? Do they not believe it's accurate? Do they not believe it's relevant? Kind of have to know what the reluctance is. But um, I, I would think that a, a way, depending on what the reluctance is, is to have uh, these people who are reluctant to uh, spend a minute and browse on Facebook and then when they're done, ask them how long they looked at this ad and don't tell them to look at an ad and um what and did they go back to the ad and ask uh, just ask them a lot of data that you would get from eye tracking that it's basically impossible for someone to answer because it's all done in the you know our eyes are moving around and our brains moving quick uh we're not uh have access to every single data point and just show the importance if, if it's a, a buy button or it's a call to action button, say how long did it take them to find it without eye tracking? And mm -hmm. um, did they find it? And then you show eye tracking results where you actually get the answers. And then if that's important, uh, they may be less reluctant. But I mm -hmm. think the first thing is to find out what is the reluctance. Yeah, um, and there's many like arguments pro and also con eye tracking, and we're always discussing them as well, right? Uh, it's expensive, it's slow, and it just produces like these hundreds of pretty pictures, but it doesn't really answer the question. And it's a good point, like eye tracking has to be implemented in research very well, and you should define what exactly, like Jeff said, do I need it for? And we can use it for qualitative purposes, just looking at what people did and interpreting it even like very like on just a few recordings and if it helps you please reach out to us i just posted jeff um jeff's email um then you can do also a recording on a product or web page that is more relevant to you if you like and and show it to your to your team just to to give it make an example it's so easy to record eye tracking videos with this tool and i'll, I'll share it in a second and i also i also I said can, right I now, just yeah. add one, just one more thing. Um, yeah. Eye tracking by itself is, is not going to give you the ins You must do a holistic view of eye tracking. You can't just do eye tracking because just because someone saw something and how long they looked at it, what order, it's important, but you need much more. And um, so it, it, just doing it by itself uh, is not going to give you insights as combining it with doing it in context, doing a, a implicit reaction testing, doing with a survey, combining all of the system one, system two together is really going to give you uh, a much more mm -hmm. accurate uh, insights to whatever you're testing. Right. And then, yes. um, Philip, you want to answer the, the, the next question? Yeah, I mean, when, when this summer will iOS be added? And that's also a question I already asked the developers of our partner. Basically, Oculet is a, is a spin-off of the Technical University here in Berlin. So, that's why we also like to feature them here and also be honest like about what provider um, 
we, we're using. And like it is always with startup and developers, they can't really say when. But the challenge making it possible on Android is much, much bigger. So I can say the easier part is to add iOS because the let's say the diversity of phones and models is just just so much um, smaller, of course. And in iOS, you also have many more tools like the face detection and lidar sensors. So eye tracking on an on an iPhone, making it possible, is the easy part. Making it possible on any Android is the difficult part. And I'm just going to show you for. Uh, short seconds you actually have seen it. So now I'm live on the Ocular dashboard. And we also invite you, of course, to, to give this a try. If you want to see it on your own phone, just send us an email. I'm going to look at this study now, Jeff. It's an internal study, so that's only why I'm allowed to show it to you. We already have 100 recordings here. And um, this test, you can see all of the different Android phones that have already been taken part, Samsung, I don't even know what Tino is, Motorola, of course. And so all of these are allowed to participate. You just need like Android 8, I think. And let's look at the recording. And so these are all the numbers. Jeff, do you want to pick one? Uh, 32. 32. OK, I, like this is really live now. I don't know if 32 has good eye tracking, so I hope it does. And um, we have these validations. So if it doesn't have good eye tracking in the analysis, it would be excluded. And I already see this person only had 3%. Let's not there. do 32. Let's pick something. <laughs> no, 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 we'll, no, we'll do it. And he or she recorded eight minutes. And um, now you see reading through the questionnaire. So that looks already pretty good. You, Looks like a, and if, if we add the tap and this person, yeah, just tapped on start. Now our questionnaire is here, and this part is not as interesting. And we don't want to see any personal identifiable <laughs> PIA data, of course. And um, so let's go to the first task. Got, we about, be to, got about two minutes left. OK, thanks. So I'll just do this very quickly. So the Facebook task is just like what you have seen with Jeff. Now I could switch to the different visualization, export this video. That's the raw data from the visual side. What we now do is export the text raw data, combine it with our in-context data, since we know what was shown here, and then analyze it. How much attention did this ad get? And you see this one worked very well. We have a, a famous person here. And yeah, that's as natural as it is. And the person now has the freedom to stay right here on this on this content for as long as he or she likes. And then I'm going to stop okay. and, and the screen. Okay. Philip, if anyone who wants to try this on their phone, send us your email, and we'll send you a link um, where you can do this on your phone with directions how to do it. And then you can test your own validity on your eye tracking uh, on, the, on your mobile phone. Definitely. And like Pam just said, tell your developers that iOS is a huge white space for you. And yeah, we know and we make, make sure they, they know as well. But we agreed with them that Android for us has is the bigger challenge, has like globally seen, of course, um, also advantages. And if we go into research with eye tracking with hundreds and hundreds of people, we do need iOS, of course. Like it's no question. It'll come. It will come, and I'm sorry if we can't give you a live demo link by now, but um, we'll make sure it's possible soon. And yeah, let's let's take the chance to close then here, Jeff. Right? As yeah, no more no more questions. And it was my my pleasure to be here with you and to welcome all of you. Thank you so much for participating. Yeah, thanks very much. I think that's about all we have time. Jeff, did Jeff have a final word there before we shine off? Just thank everybody for being uh, with us and have a great day. Yeah, thanks very much. So that's that's about all we have time for today. Thanks so much to Jeff and Philip and iSquare and most importantly, all of you out there for taking time to be with us here today. We really appreciate it. So thanks very much and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Joe. Take care.